Hello and welcome to News Click. Uh, today we have with us Professor Sonia Gupta, who is a director at uh, Center for European and Latin American Studies at Jamia Millia University. Welcome, Professor. Professor, talking about Venezuela, uh, the Constitutional Assembly election were held on 30 July 2017. What has progressed after that? Yes, yeah, so I think the July 30th elections to the National Constituent Assembly or the ANC as it's popularly known were, I think, a uh, uh, really a watershed uh, because uh, just before that we had seen four months, 120 days of violence with these armed groups called Guarimbas in you know the street violence that Venezuela had witnessed and which was accompanied with, by a huge propaganda campaign against the Maduro government and against the Bolivarian process itself. Um, the entire uh, violence has just stopped after the National Constituent Assembly. So that goes on to show that the kind of attack that Venezuela is facing is actually a hybrid attack. It's not the, it's a non-conventional war. So you have this entire media, the foreign media was there and you know at appropriate times taking, clicking the pictures of the violence and you know the entire world thinking that Venezuela was on the brink of a crisis, that there was chaos. And it's so interesting to see that just after July 30th, the violence has stopped. So why has that happened? One is the ANC itself was thought of as a democratic exit out of the impasse in which the, you know, there was a kind of a constitutional impasse because there was a national assembly which had been elected in December 2015 with a majority going to the opposition. But there were some legal issues because of which the Supreme Court of Venezuela had objected to uh, you know, some of the parliamentarians who had been found to use fraudulent methods and therefore they were debarred from uh, the assembly. The, um, the opposition had basically made this an issue that you know we are not being allowed to run the National Assembly. But the main aim of the opposition was to ask the ouster of Nicolas Maduro and their mere aim is to finish away with Chavismo. Now the Constituent Assembly itself, if you see it has been done in accordance with the 1999 uh, constitution which was you know kind of done under the visionary leadership of Hugo Chavez just after he took office and it talks about the Constituent Assembly as an integral part of popular power. So the referendums that are often held, the, uh, the changes in constitution through constituent assemblies are very much a part of the Bolivarian constitution. And this particular constituent assembly, as you know, has about 540 odd members and it is not the usual election. It is through sectoral representation. So there are from the youth, from women's organizations, from trade unions, from uh, fishermen's organizations and so on and so forth. Once this assembly was sworn in, and this happened on 1st August. The important thing was that the July 30th election saw a massive turnout of the Venezuelan people. Some 41% of the eligible electorate participated in the election to the Constituent Assembly. Now that really was something which the opposition had never thought would happen, you know. And so we saw a resurgent Chavismo kind of asserting itself and people actually came out to vote. So the Constituent Assembly kind of established in a certain way the legitimacy of Chavistas, of, of, of Chavismo in the eyes of international observers as well as within the country. So after that what has happened is that uh, there have been offers of a dialogue with the opposition. You know. So the Constituent Assembly has been given the charge of uh, drafting out a new constitution plus you know modifying the education plan and so on and so forth and they have been working at the grassroots level with people and you know talking to the communes and to the communal councils and so on and so forth. At the governmental level there has been an attempt to restart the dialogue. Now the Maduro government has always been keen on holding a dialogue with the opposition and it's the opposition which has been shying away from all dialogue because they're entire uh, emphasis has been on the ouster of Maduro and that has been their only demand that Nicolas Maduro has to go. Now Nicolas Maduro has his presidential term up till 2018. There is, a, there is a presidential election coming up. In fact, there is an entire chronogram of elections in uh, Venezuela. Now October 15th, we have the regional elections that is the election to the governors of the 23 provinces which are scheduled and then of course and again in December and then 2018. 
after death after the death of Hugo Chavez and as soon as Nicolas Maduro took over the presidency in April 2014 there has been an increased violence on the streets you know so it was you've seen just after his election about 43 people died and it was much more this time and it was of course localized for example in the eastern side of Caracas and a few other provinces the international media of course played it up it was uh, not only there in the uh, big media but also you know in the social uh, social media and Facebook and particularly WhatsApp messages suddenly my students were talking about ma'am you were talking about the Bolivarian revolution and its uh, you know achievements and here we have you are saying it's a democracy and there is so much violence going on and so on and so forth so it was an absolutely state of art technology being used all uh, you know with the full support of globalized communications so when I say that there was a hybrid war against Venezuela and the ANC election has been a kind of a breather because that kind of attempt to discredit the Maduro government uh, and of course this absolute huge propaganda war through transnational media houses and through social media etc seems to have suddenly stopped a different narrative has started you know of human human rights and so on and so forth but uh, the ANC has given a big breather to the Venezuelan government and certainly to the people. With the Hugo Chavez the world had hoped for a government for the people it has really hoped for a government which is with the people. Uh, do you think Venezuela paves the way for a new model of democracy. That's exactly what it is, you know, and that is why it is so dangerous. That is why the Venezuelan model is a threat. Because if you look at President Chavez, his own emergence as a leader was not just that there was a leader and then he took the masses with him. In fact, there, the, Venezuela had a very strong, uh, you know, currents of various social movements in different uh, the 23rd January and in fact this wonderful book by George Chikar Alomayer where he talks about where, where the title of the book is We Made Chavez. So, uh, so really in, in, in Venezuela as well as I think even in Bolivia and Ecuador and many other parts of uh, Latin America including Brazil I think we have to talk about a democracy from below because it was the entire uh, it was the through the hemispheric alliances which had been established during the World Social Forum do you know during those uh, 90s uh, starting with the rebellion the Chiapas rebellion in Mexico the entire current of social movements and indigenous assertion that swept across Latin America now that was the basis of Latin American integration and the pink tide the so-called pink tide so it is not so these ushering in of these leaders and particularly of Hugo Chavez and the you know the way he was uh, has to do with the strong uh, social movements in many of these Latin American countries. So why was there a need for new constitutions in many of these countries? Ecuador had a, re a referendum and you know public participation and a new constituent assembly. Uh, Bolivia had a similar thing and Venezuela the very first thing that President Chavez did was what I have already referred to the 1999 constitution which why was it needed because here was a new model of democracy being uh, being uh, constructed where the backbone of the Venezuelan democracy is the communes the communal councils so it's a highly decentralized system where the communal councils are at least were very strong over the last one year one has seen a kind of an erosion of the kind of uh, uh, empowerment one saw through the communal councils but the fact is that Hugo Chavez had this vision to see that a participatory democracy is actually uh, uh, you know going to be possible only if you think of the people's power as supreme so that went into the constitution that has the constitutional level and at the theoretical level I would like to uh, cite uh, Alvaro Garcia Linera the vice president of Bolivia who uh, you know talking about democracy uh, in talking about democracies in revolution you know that Latin American democracies in revolution said that democracy is a site it is the locus of building socialism the more radical your democracy the better you are on the road to building socialism so this kind of gradualism that uh, is being seen in these new 
experiments with building socialism, which are not through like, like 1960s, the Cuban revolution, which was through the uh, you know, capture of uh, state power through an armed uprising. Here, in, whether it is in Ecuador or Bolivia, particularly in Venezuela, it is through elections. And if it is going to be through elections, uh, it has a different uh, essence altogether. So democracy is not something to be impatient with, you know, that soon this transitional phase will be over and we will build socialism. I think democracy is being looked at as the very site, as the space, as the locus of building socialism. You said about uh, people's power as supreme. Uh, normally when we talk about uh, military and politics, uh, in the context of Latin America or many other countries, we see military dictatorship. But Venezuelan army is a different case. Uh, there are quite interesting facts. So uh, how it is related to uh, people and how uh, w w the close relation between people and army. Yeah, actually this is a, a singular feature of the Bolivarian Revolution. What they call the Union Civico Militar, that is the Civil Military Union. Partly, uh, one has to see that the entire discourse of the Bolivarian process is is rooted uh, in, 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 in you know in Bolivar's dream of one of Latin American integration, and also his the anti-imperialism you know as much against Spanish imperialism as against the nascent United States uh, imperialism. So, the Bolivarian army draws its legacy from the figure of Simon Bolivar and from that tradition of that anti-imperialist tradition. You'll be surprised that this time when I went to Caracas, I participated in uh, uh, with the army, the entire army. It's known as the Fuerza uh, Nacional Bolivariana, so which means Bolivarian National Armed Forces. So uh, they are uh, they talk about uh, and they were they were celebrating the second anti-imperialist forum. So it's an army which is very different from the usual conception of the army have, particularly when we think of Latin America, as you rightly said, you think of Latin America and you think of the military and you think of dictatorships. But here is an army which traditionally, I mean, after all, Hugo Chavez himself was from the armed forces, the Bolivarian armed forces. In fact, I must correct myself, it's not the Bolivarian armed forces because uh, uh, Hugo Chavez insisted that it's the armed force, one united armed force. Uh, and uh, I must also tell you that uh, I was talking about the civil military union somewhere and I said that the Bolivarian army is with the government and uh, the ambassador of Venezuela immediately corrected me and he said, no, it is not with the government, it is with the people. And I think this was uh, something which was slightly difficult for me to understand till I went recently to the military university. It's a university where the armed forces uh, people study along with the civilian populations like any other university. More importantly, the the conception of defense of the country, that the, the, that the task of the defense of the country is not just of the army, but of the people as such, that it's the entire people. So, uh, so there isn't much differentiation in terms of, uh, you know, the role of the army as protecting the borders, etc. Uh, only. The army is integrally linked to the people's processes and takes part in it like any other civilian population would. Recently, the U.S. President uh, Donald Trump, he threatened Venezuela with military action. These are the times when uh, do you think that a global solidarity is required to stand with uh, Venezuela? Absolutely. Venezuela represents the hope for humanity at the moment, I would say, because the Venezuelan experiment with building socialism within a democracy is of unique importance to all of us who live in democracies uh, around in the world and who believe in uh, in peace and democracy. The military option that President Trump talked about was only recent, but they have been at war with Venezuela. They have tried diplomatic isolation. They have tried through the organization of American states. As you know, President Hugo Chavez had visualized this attack, you know, and therefore he had emphasized on Latin American integration, the economic sabotage, and I have already talked about the media war. So unlike the military coups that were attempted earlier, what are being attempted now are soft coups. And the whole idea is to destabilize the government, discredit the government, and as in, in Trump's own words, suffocate the Venezuelan economy. And 
make the people so distraught that they would just out of sheer uh, just give up on the chavismo and you know just want to get out of this situation so this and and all of this coupled with this discourse of a humanitarian crisis in venezuela so in face of all this venezuela today has been able to not only survive but survive well because of international solidarity and this international solidarity has come apart from people's solidarity also for example in the united nations the recent general assembly the entire nam block 120 member states voted for a resolution against coercive measures they did not name venezuela but it was very clear that 120 member nam had voted against coercive coercive measures and interference in the sovereign countries cuba in the un uh, human uh, rights commission moved a resolution uh, on venezuela human rights and it was supported by 63 countries including india but i think more important than these are is the solidarity of uh, of the people's movements the solidarity of uh, of people who believe that 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 there is hope in this new model of democracy which venezuelan people are trying to build and that they should be given a chance without this kind of a foreign uh, um, you know intervention and attempts at suffocating the experiment uh, we just participated um, in the solidarity conference it was an international solidarity summit in caracas in on between september 16th and 19th and there were about 200 participants from more than 60 countries from all the five continents and these were peace activists um uh, grassroots trade unionist uh, grassroots leaders and even religious leaders coming from churches because one of the uh, interesting uh, features of the bolivarian process has been that the the hierarchy the church hierarchy has been siding with the opposition but uh, the the people are very religious and the entire discourse of hugo chavez was about a christian socialism and uh, so several religious leaders were present in this international um, uh, summit for solidarity which was called todos somos venezuela which means all of us are venezuela a dialogue for peace democracy and bolivarian revolution and bolivarian democracy all all latin american countries by the way have uh, pronounced themselves against the use of military in venezuela even the allies of us so i think that is what the international solidarity has been able to achieve and um, we have to continue with it thank you professor Gupta, uh, sonia gupta for speaking to news click